What's up, y'all? Actually, I'm supposed to say hola, peeps. My boyfriend likes it when I say hola, peeps. <laughs> hey, everybody. It is Sean. Listen, today is February 5th, 2023. There is a full moon tonight, but I am doing a video for you today that is in preparation for the new moon that's coming on February 20th. So I want to give you guys a head start, a um, not a head start. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, a early look at what might be in store for you during the new moon when that comes in a couple of weeks. Today, we are going to be receiving messages from three goddesses. Y'all know how I feel about goddess messages, right? So we have Ishtar, who is an Assyrian goddess. In fact, I just learned today that she is the first deity to ever be uh, written about. That's kind of amazing. The first deity. That means that includes dudes, y'all. Anyway, um, we're getting messages from Ishtar. We're getting messages from Vesta. And we're getting messages from Inkosazana. I love saying her name. I say that every time she's part of the pick a pile. So yes, we are pick a piling today. When uh, I shut my mouth, take a second, take a look, see which one of these three goddesses is drawing you in. And that is where you will find, I didn't say that right. What I'm trying to say is <laughs> you're reading, okay? You're going to get messages in your reading from one of these three goddesses. You will see the timestamps taking you to your reading in the description box of this video. If you are watching or listening on your phone, you will find them also in the first comment, making it easy for you to access. That's all I'm going to say. I will see you guys in your readings. Welcome, Group 1, to your reading. You have been guided in by the goddess Ishtar. So let's find out what uh, messages she has for you for this new moon season, the uh, February 19th, 2023 new moon. We, I have already, not we, I have already shuffled your cards, but I have not pre-pulled them. Y'all know the drill if you've been here before. I'd like you to be able to experience that with me. If you're brand new, hey, welcome. It's so good to have you here. All right, Ishtar. What messages do you have for group number one in regards to this upcoming new moon today? What messages do you have for them today? to help them prepare for the upcoming new moon. All right, we got the Ace of Cups. Messages from Ishtar. Ishtar, what messages do you have for these guys? Ace of Swords. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I think I know what this is already. Ace of Swords. What messages do you have for this group, Ishtar? The wheel. Messages for group one, please. And the six of wands. Okay. So, um, what I'm getting here for you guys has to do with your uh, a major relationship in your life. For some of you, this might be a romantic relationship. For some of you, it might actually be a work relationship, but it's a relationship that takes, um, that holds a predominant position in your life, a, a, a big, um, it's an important part of your life. It might even be a relationship with a parent, um, not getting a sense that it is, some, it's, I'm not getting a sense that it's a relationship with a friend or a relationship with um, a child if you've got adult children or even if you have uh, small children um, because this has to do with someone, it's, it's in regards to a relationship with someone whose say matters. Now, I know that there's some of you are like, well, you know, what kids say and what they think should matter too. I mean, sure, that's what some people think and others do not. But across the board, most of us do believe that um, our spouse or life partner's words, thoughts, feelings, needs 
uh, weigh in on how we're able to live, right? We definitely tend to have that belief when it comes to our uh, supervisors or um, managers in our work environments. And uh, again, most people tend to feel that way about their relationship with their parent, a parent as well. We don't all have that sense, but across the board, that tends to be the belief, right? So this, um, your messages today from Ishtar are around conflict that you have been having with this person. And that with this upcoming new moon, it's really a great time for you to begin to try to resolve this conflict. I'm getting a sense that it's been a long standing conflict that's happened, uh, that's, that's, um, been in place for for many years and the conflict is coming because is there because you guys are coming from two completely different places in how you look at things uh you might literally be like the yin to this person's yang how am i doing that the the yin to, i can't do it and have you see it uh there we go. All right. You might literally be the yin to this person's yang, you know, the air to their earth. No, the fire to their water. Maybe. I don't know. But whatever the exact opposite is, I feel like that's who that who you guys are to each other. So it's not just you are difficult for them, but they're difficult for you, too. And it's because your natures are just so vastly different. But this is um, a belief, right? This is, um, you know, some people will say like gender is a construct or time is a construct. In a similar fashion, how we perceive people or how they perceive us is a construct in that it's based on uh, beliefs beliefs that we already hold or things that we think to be true. And we filter our experiences with those people through the beliefs that we're holding. Um, and the message that's coming through from Ishtar is this is the time for you to uh, determine whether or not this is a relationship that you want to continue and if so, to find the way to heal those, uh, the conflict that's been there. And it comes from being able to accept the differences as being okay, because it's the idea that it's a problem that this person is not like you or them having the idea that it's a problem that you're not like them that causes the conflict as opposed to being able to live in a spirit of coexistence with one another. All right. For others of you, the message is this conflict is not going to be resolving. And on a deep level, you know that. And yes, it is because of the things that you each believe about each other. Also, the beliefs that you each have about um, just life itself, how to go through life, how to get through life, what to do in life, right? And and so because this is going to continuously be, there's no resolution here, all right? So this might be a, a great example of this is uh, for those people who have um, a narcissist in their life, right? One of the ways, there are two ways that get mentioned on how to deal with a narcissist. Um, if, if you can't just, well, yeah, if, if you have to deal with the narcissist, there are two ways that are touted. One is to gray rock, which is to give them no, um, what's the word? Um, no energy, no, no feedback to whatever drama they're bringing to you. And then the other way is to, um, go no contact. And that's where you have to cut that person out of your life altogether. And the message that's coming here for those of you who have this, um, uh, not just undeniable conflict, but it it just it's unresolvable. It's a kind of conflict that it's just always going to be there, right? And it is sapping your energy. Hey, listen, it's also sapping the other person's energy. Even if it feels like they get off on this conflict, it's not the healthiest way for anybody to function. So the message for you is to go ahead and admit this to yourself, that this is a relationship that is not salvageable, that does not have healing in its future. Now, um, again, I, I want to add to that, give this time 
and attention in your thinking before making any major changes to a relationship, particularly if it's with a spouse or a parent or your supervisor at work, manager at work, as I mentioned before, because these are, um, um, I don't want to say important relationships because most of us feel like all of our relationships are important, at least to some extent, but they are, your life hinges on these, on these particular relationships uh, a lot of the time, right? So, so really, really do some digging to find out whether or not this is um, definitely a relationship that you feel that you need to end. In either case, whether you're in that group that is going to be healing or, or looking to uh, is advise being advised to uh, find a way to heal, or you're in that group that is being advised to let it go, to stop letting this person, what I'm getting is this person runs all over you. They take advantage of you. They don't treat you well, right? So there's no amount of fixing that you can do for that. You have tried, you have given it your all, but it's time for things to change in your favor. In both of these situations, it's time for forward movement because what's been happening is not victory for you and you are deserving of victory. You are worthy of and capable of a new kind of relationship. So if you're one of those people that is going to be uh, learning to look at this person with a new perspective or the fact that you guys have differences, looking at that with the new perspective is we're different, but that's okay. How do I make use of this person's differences? How do I make the way that I'm different from them useful to that person? Um, it's going to be a new relationship in the way in which you guys relate to each other. So the existing relationship will be a new, if that makes sense to you. And then for others of you, for those of you who the guidance is to go ahead and end that conflict. Now, either way, the conflict is going to end. But for those of you who uh, that are getting that it is time to end that relationship because it is not one that will ever, ever be harmonious. Um, it's, it's you're, you're being told that you too are entitled to a new relationship, one that works. And so with both of you guys, um, during this new moon that's coming up on the 20th of February, a new relationship is in store. I said all of that to get to that. A new relationship is in store. And it could be, like I said, in the um, current relationship, just making such a drastic change, such a, a huge shift. The dynamic is so different that it becomes a new relationship. And then for others, it's, you know, know that you can, you will and uh, have a new relationship. It is it is on the horizon for you, I dare say, by the 20th of February. Um, and so that will be your new relationship. You do not have to hang on to this thing that is not working again, whether it is a parent, a current partner or um uh, supervisor at work. Okay, you guys, uh, before I say goodbye to you, I want to give you an affirmation to send you forward in this, uh, time of, of new, new, newness, right? That new moon, it's a perfect time for newness. It's a perfect time for taking, I say this in every new moon video I ever do, perfect time for taking new actions, things that you have not done before, steps you have not taken before. Um, the energies are just perfect for planting new seeds, right? Uh, so you can plant new seeds in the form of this new uh, dynamic within the existing relationship, or you can plant new seeds in the form of getting... Uh, meeting somebody new, you know, get on a, what's it called? Dating site. Oof, I don't miss that shit. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't miss that. Uh, though I did get a lot of good free dinners. Okay. So what I got for you, your card is, can you see that? Let me bring that closer. Courage. Wish upon a star and release all limiting beliefs. See? Limiting beliefs. That's what I was talking about earlier. It's our beliefs about a thing that create how we interact with that thing. So go ahead and let yourself start seeing the situation differently, whether it's uh, that you're keeping the relationship and so you want to 
um, process that person differently than you have been before, process the relationship and, and the activities of the relationship differently than you have been before, or it's that uh, you're, you know, you're going to get rid of the limiting belief that you have to stay in a relationship that is never going to be um, one that's harmonious and, and let yourself meet somebody new. Let yourself be open to and available for new love in either of these two respects, either, are both of my hands in there, either, there we go, either. Okay, you guys, that's what I got for you. Thank you for being here. Listen, if you ever need a personal reading, you know how to reach me. Etsy. You can also get them on my website, seanwilson.com. I appreciate you guys being here listening to these videos. Um, oh, I have a brand new narcissist reading coming up for you guys soon. So keep your eyes out for that. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, now is the perfect time to do so because you're feeling so good from all the things I just said to you. Also, be sure to comment here and let me know what your thoughts are. Who is this difficult person in your life? Name drop their asses. Name drop them right here in my video. I won't tell. See you guys next time. You guys, I offer relationship readings on my Etsy shop. So if you have an interest in getting a love and relationship reading or a narcissistic relationship reading, for any of you who have that situation going on in your life, please check out the links below. It'll show you exactly how to do that. And uh, for the narcissistic relationship reading, if you use discount code NARC1, you will get 15% off your first order. Hello, group two. So you guys were brought in to your reading today by Vesta. Vesta, the goddess of hearth and home. Um, I believe in the Roman tradition and then in the Greek tradition, she's called Vestia. You know, we get that phrase Vestal Virgins from her. But anyway, so she's got messages for you. Vesta, may we please have these messages for group two in regards to how they can best uh, make use of the energies of the upcoming new moon on February 20th of this year your cards have already been shuffled guys i shuffle them before i start the video but they had not already been picked i'd like you to experience that with me and the first card you got is the five of swords make a little bit more space there okay vesta messages please for group two. Oh, thank you we have the nine of wands messages please Vesta for group two she's very communicative today this goddess because these cards are just popping right out for me queen of wands five of swords nine of wands queen of wands and four of swords I don't know if you guys heard that but that's Casper um yeah, he tends to... Oh, look at that. Interesting. Yes, Casper, mommy's working. Okay, um, <laughs> back the deck energy that you guys got is the strength card. Let me push these up a little bit so I can get that strength card on there as well. Very interesting. Okay. So what I'm getting here is that it is time for you guys to release something something that has been causing a lot of conflict for you something that's been like disturbing your peace keeping you awake at night um it's time for that conflict to end is um Vesta's message and what's interesting about that it's it's a very similar message to part of uh, group one's reading but uh, yours is different. This is specifically about um, something that you've been struggling with in your personal life. This is specific to your personal life. And what it has lent to is your healing of some very, very old shit. Um, what, now, I'm not saying that you're completely healed. I'm... I'm the, what I'm getting here is that for some of you, it's the conflict that you've been having 
has illuminated for you that there is a healing that needs to happen. Some of you may have already started this process by seeking out maybe self-help books or self-help videos on YouTube, actually making an appointment with a counselor. I've heard a lot of people tout uh, better help. Now, full disclosure, I haven't heard like people I personally know talk about using better help. I've heard people uh, plug it in their own videos. I cannot speak to the quality of care or quality of uh, counseling services that you get there, but I just know that it's right now it's in the zeitgeist. But what uh, is coming through for you guys is that you want a better family than you've had. What's coming through for you guys is that um, you've been made aware over the course of, for some of you, months, for some of you just as recently as weeks. But it, the message has come through very, very strongly that you are the one to be the catalyst for change in what is your family's story. Uh, so, uh, some of you may have heard of ancestral healing or uh, healing karmic patterns or even just um, healing old family wounds. Okay, I'm getting the sense that for many of you, addiction is a part of what the problem has been and that the um, abuse of alcohol in most of the cases, but in some of the cases, the use of even stronger substances than alcohol um, has been the cause of the turmoil, the cause of the pain. And it predates the family that you now have built for yourself or have been trying to build with a, let's say a significant other, if you're not, if you're not married to the person yet, but you have begun to recognize uh, behaviors and patterns that were in your family of origin. Things that you said you would never have be part of your adult life, you are realizing have been recreated in your adult life. And your desire for something better is showing up again for you. It's almost like you forgot the promises you made to yourself as a child. And you have been without your own sense of power as you've tried to navigate this current home situation because of subconscious beliefs that were in your childhood home situation. Uh, let me say that better. Subconscious beliefs that were formed when you were growing up in your childhood home situation. And what happened, it's, it's so insidious how this happens. You ended up replaying some of the same dramas and scenarios that used to be a part of your childhood. You're just playing a different role now than you did when you were younger. Because you're an adult now and you're one of the people creating this environment and you know that you want something different for yourself invest invest this message to you is that you can have something different you should have something different and now with this upcoming new moon is a perfect time to start looking at how you uh bring new energy into your living scenario so i uh am feeling call to say to you that it's not not all for it's not a boyfriend girlfriend or husband wife scenario for all of you for some of you this dynamic is playing itself out self out in roommate situations ah i also just got for some of you it might be no it might be um let me say it right what's that phrase i want to say it right you know, okay, a work, work husband or work wife, that's the phrase. So it's that person that like the, the association started at work in a work environment, but this, you bonded with this person, uh, possibly have, yeah, uh, bonded over, um, 
similar experiences from your childhood, similar hurts, similar grievances towards uh, family members or parents or whatever. And so you felt a closeness for one another and you became more than just work colleagues, work friends, but now this person is part of your personal life as well. Okay. Uh, but the strongest energy that I'm getting here is that it is about the home, uh, your home life and being ready to be done with the conflict that has been in this home. And being ready to have peace again and reclaim your power. What I'm getting also is that your power will begin to come back to you when you allow yourself to rest, when you allow your thoughts to rest. The obsessive thinking, the um, ruminating that you've been experiencing is a, I'm being told to tell you, it's a direct result of dealing with the addicted person. Or persons, I'm getting that in some cases for some of you, and my heart goes out to you, it's multiple addicted people in your home environment. Uh, they might not all be addicted to a substance. It could be addic uh, behavioral addictions like shopping. or um, And so they overspend. And then when it's time to pay the rent, it's time to pay the bills. The money is not there. Okay. Um, getting for some of you, it is a dual addiction in that one of the people in the home is addicted to a substance and the other person and another person, another person in the home is addicted to the uh, person who's got the substance addiction. And then you are having to live in the crazy that is made between the two of them in that environment. And you get, you get wrapped up in it, you get caught into it in, and even though you try your best to not be a part of that drama you are living in it that energy is affecting you it is touching you uh with the strength card being the back of the deck energy for you there's a clear reminder there to remember your inner strength to get back in touch with your inner strength to remember that home is where the heart is that is a motto that is associated with vesta or if it's not, it should be. Maybe I just made that up. I don't know. I just know that with her being goddess of hearth and home, just remembering that, you know, and then here in this particular strength card, if I'm not mistaken, this is the Light Series Tarot by Chrisanne. I mean, it's highly unlikely that that's a strawberry on her necklace. That's more than likely a heart, right? Oh, and there's definitely a heart here. Look at this in this Four of Swords. You will regain your power when you allow yourself to rest again, when you allow your mind to rest again. When you allow your mind to rest, that will then lend itself to your body being able to rest better at night. And when you are well rested, you are better able to know what to do to take care of yourself, know what changes you need to make, know what behaviors you need to stop, know uh, what steps you can take. What I'm getting for you is new home for new moon, new home by new moon. And I know some of you might be like, I don't know how I could possibly afford that, Sean, or I'm not able to move yet, Sean. Let yourself be open to the idea of it <clears throat> and ask for help um, from the universe, from whatever deities you believe in, from angels. If you're an angel, believe your person thingy. I don't know how I'm saying that. Hold on. <clears throat> something was in my throat if you're a person who believes in angels whatever it is you believe in it's possible you've forgotten that they are aside you beside you beside you and they are willing to help you if you will but ask but they will not help you until you ask and for some of you this is an impossible it feels like an impossible task because the trust in life has been broken and so just the idea of asking for help just makes you go, Ugh. I get it. I get it. I've been there, y'all. I get it. So for some of you, you may not have heard of Vesta before. Let her be the one you ask. You don't have a track record with her of not answering your prayers. So this can be a brand new, fresh start. I'm, oh, I'm also getting new uh, deity relationship for the new moon. Allow that to be part of your guidance starting a new relationship with this goddess during this time of the new moon 
And when you have specific needs, specific concerns, specific fears, or it just gets to be too much in the home, let Vesta be the specific deity that you talk to about it. That's what I have for you guys. Um, and the reminder, the reminder is so important of your strength that you can reclaim your power, which has been blocked. Look how strong this girl is in the Nine of Wands too. And with Nine of Wands, this card speaks to coming out of a conflict. Being finished with it. You're finished with that, y'all. You're finished with it. This shit is done. <laughs> and this, this strength, this strength, this peace, that is for you. Brand new home life. Whether it's an actual change in your physical home, the, like the place where you live, a physical change of home, or it is a change in how you are in that home. But I do feel the need to caution you that just adjusting your behaviors and thoughts oftentimes is, is not enough if you're dealing with a scenario where there is substance abuse. And so I want to remind you that in those cases, um, even if best case scenario, the abuser, the sorry, the person who is addicted, the addicted person stops using, there's always, always the possibility of them going back to it. So if you're in a situation where you can make a physical change in your home for yourself, you might want to consider that. If you're in a situation where that's not possible because you are financially tied to this person, it might be your spouse. You might actually still love this person. You might have share children with them. Then definitely starting to find the tools uh, that will help you not feel like you're in a war zone in your own home is what I'm getting. Uh, for some of you, I'm being told to mention Al-Anon um, in open AA meetings and open NA meetings as a place to get some guidance. Uh, for others of you, I can highly recommend a channel here on Face, sorry, YouTube, YouTube. Um, the creator's name is, she calls herself Crappy Childhood Fairy. Her real name is Anna Runkle. And she speaks to um, those who have CPTSD. Some people refer to that as, uh, use that acronym for complex PTSD. And others use it for childhood PTSD. And I feel like every single person who chose this group has that. Whether it's that you had a ton of traumas as a child or you just had a ton of traumas in your life and they've built up, hence the complex PTSD. So Anna's channel is a place, a free place for you to start getting some, um, some words that can help you start approaching your, your home situation with a, a new energy, a new perspective. Okay, you guys, my, my heart goes to you. I have um, picked up a deck of cards that have beautiful affirmations on them. So I want to give you guys an affirmation before I wrap up your reading. So let's do that. What affirmation? Oh, Lady of the House. Okay, Vesta, I also just got for you from Vesta. Uh, so I'm guessing there's a lot of women who chose this pile. You are the Lady of the House. And that is a place of honor. That's what I got. It, you are the, it's like, imagine, so like, this is going to sound kind of fantastical. Sorry if it sounds crazy, but imagine like the house, the home, whatever it is, apartment, whatever it is. And then there's like, like your aura encases it, your spirit, your presence. I don't know that I've said that as well as I'd like to. It's a little esoteric even for me, <laughs> but it's like, uh, like, 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 say it was a dollhouse, right? And, um, yeah, okay, so, like, dollhouses are toys, and then, like, if you were, like, 
I don't know if you guys remember, there used to be like these little snap doll toy thingies. I'm not saying that well at all. But anyway, so it's like you're like the ornament at the top of the house. Better example. I got it. I got a better one. (laughs) You know the Barbie dream home? It's not called the Barbie and Ken dream home. And it's not called the Ken dream home. It's Barbie's dream home. Okay? You're Barbie. It's the best example I could succinctly come up with. But basically what I'm getting at is you are the lady of that home. You are the lady of the house. That is yours. That is yours. You have power there. Just remember it. Okay. Um, Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Affirmation. May I please have an affirmation for group two? Oh, thank you. All right, we got dark side. Don't hide yourself away. So I feel like what this is saying to you guys is, you know, the shadow self, right? And in this case, it is your sense of power. All right, let me let me back up. For those of you who don't have the vocabulary of shadow self, it's the part of ourselves that we do not allow to uh, be evident to people and sometimes even to ourselves because at some point in our lives we learned um, either through experience or through conditioning that 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 it's wrong to have that aspect of our personality okay Um, so for some people a very very easy example of a quote dark side Uh, that needs to be let out a little bit more is anger. A lot of people are not in touch with their anger because we've been taught or or told or seen depicted on TV or movies or whatever that anger is bad or wrong. Um, No, anger is an emotion that you feel that tells you when your boundaries have been violated and gives you guidance on what you need to do to make changes so that you can be happy and at peace in your life again, even if that means getting rid of certain situations or people. Anger is healthy. Now, beating somebody up because you're angry, that shit's bad. Don't do that. Okay. Um, And what I've What I'm getting here for you guys in particular with it being dark side, don't hide yourself away. It's about your power. Like I said a second ago, you are the lady of the house. Let your presence be more of a presence in this situation and call the damn shots more. And it might be easy for me to say that from, you know, my safe and content little area of the world. But maybe... Maybe you found this video because you needed to hear it from somebody who would say that to you. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that. And and listen, I'm not trying to come from a place of I know better than you or I know how you need to run your life. No, I, there have been times in my life in situations of my life where I've forgotten my power because circumstances were what they were or the um, environment I was in was what it was, whatever it I started going with the flow of what that environment was, forgetting that I brought something to the table. Even if that's something that I brought is just no. Being able to say no or choosing not to do something. Okay. So your power, remember your power. Don't hide yourself away. For some of you, I'm getting to tell you to put up indications of yourself in this home you are missing from your home that just keeps coming up you're missing from your home you're not there you're not there because this other person's presence and the drama or traumas that come with it the conflicts that come with it are so pervasive find the things that are you and start putting indications of you in that home uh, figuratively and literally All right, you guys, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you watching my videos. Um, If you haven't already done so, please be sure to like it so YouTube knows to send it out to other people. Subscribe to the channel so you will know every single time I do a reading. In fact, I have another narcissist reading coming up soon. A lot of you guys like that narcissist reading I did a couple weeks ago. Sorry that the audio was so bad. I was using a program on my um, device that switched mics and I didn't know it. So it sounded like trash. Um, I tried to clean it up some, but it was not as warm as my usual sound. Um, And then, of course, if you guys ever need a personal reading, 
You know, I do offer those via Etsy and through my website. Links to everything, everything is in the links are links to everything are in the description box of this video. Thank you for being here and I'll see you guys in a few days. You guys, I offer relationship readings on my Etsy shop. So if you have an interest in getting a love and relationship reading or a narcissistic relationship reading for any of you who have that situation going on in your life, please check out the links below. It'll show you exactly how to do that. And uh, for the narcissistic relationship reading, if you use discount code NARC1, you will get 15% off your first order. Hey, 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 group three. <laughs> How are you? Um, so let me just start off by saying thank you for being here to get some messages from Inko Zazana. For this new moon we have coming up in Pisces. New moon in Pisces this February 20th. I have already shuffled your cards. I shuffle them before I start the camera, but I have not pre-plucked them. So uh, because I like you to be able to experience my picking the cards with me. Did I say that right? Experience? Anyway, y'all get what I'm saying. Um, you get to see them as I see them. So let's find out what messages Inko Susanna has for you for this upcoming new moon. Inko Susanna, can we please get some messages for group three, please? In regards to this new moon in Pisces. Guidances that you might have for them, please. All right, the first card you got is Six of Cups. Oh, okay. And then you got Six of Pentacles and the Hermit together. Okay. Messages, Inko Susanna, messages. For this new moon in Pisces for group three. Messages for group three. These cards are being very deliberate for this reading. A lot more so than they were for the other two. But it says to me that the messages coming in for you guys are very important. So please be sure you take note of what is being said three of cups mm. yeah Ooh. goodness gracious all right and we have page of swords and i was also just called to also give you page of cups i'm not exactly sure why but i'm sure we'll find out all right so um The first thing that's, you guys heard me give that very big sigh, I'm sure, as I was pulling out cards. I think it was right around the time that we got Three of Cups. And um, I'm getting that for you. This uh, new moon season is, it's about growing up that sounds a little bit harsh so i'm gonna try to say it better um it's there's relationships that are in your life that it's time for you to shed um i'm getting that you you have some people that you have known for a very long time uh for many of you it's childhood friends childhood acquaintances um there could be a group of you that were all like best friends together but lately you haven't really been feeling as though you fit with that group anymore you're not receiving anything from this association the way you used to um, and a lot of that has to do with the growth and maturity that you did that's just natural a natural part of growing up um and then um 
for some, it's distance. For some of you guys, it's distance, right? Uh, either you, I'm getting that it's you. You have moved more so than it's that the other people, because I, I, I'm getting a very strong sense of it being a group of friends that were all close at one point, but you're no longer there. OK, you um, you might have moved to a bigger city that exposed you to more things. And so what you want for yourself is in set is at such a different level than what your these these friends of yours from your past want for themselves or even talk about or even know to think about that you don't really feel like you're part of the group. You felt kind of isolated from them for a while. Um, part of it is the, you know, the changes in circumstances. You might have been the only one out of the three, four, five of you that went to college. And so just making that change alone started that creating that distance between you. Um, but while I'm getting that some of this is just about the growth that you have done as an individual from experiencing more things, some of it is also because of growth you've done as an in individual on purpose that's uh, specific to your inner self healing some things from your past healing something you've you've spent a lot of time healing and growing and because of that certain kinds of dynamics that used to work for you just aren't working for you anymore uh certain uh benefits or what felt like benefits to you for a very long time that you were getting from these relationships just don't feel like uh benefits to you anymore there are things that these people used to provide for your life that you either no longer need or you now have the ability to provide for yourself. Uh, for many of you, I'm getting that it's a sense of self-referral. It was that being a part of this group gave you a sense of identity, helped you define who you are or who you were as a person. But you are now at a place where you don't need externals, not even ex not even in the form of friendships. You don't need externals to define who you are. That you uh, feel quite comfortable and capable of... Um, defining yourself not looking for the answers about you to come from anybody else um i'm also getting that you know a lot of, like i said earlier i think i alluded to this earlier you've just you've been exposed to so much and so there's so many new ideas, new perspectives that have come into your awareness and these other people, they are not there. They have not had that same learning. And when you try to interject these wisdoms, these these insights, you know, these um, observances, in, not, not observances, observations, observations, different word, into conversations with these, these guys, they don't know what you're talking about. In fact, there's a part of you that senses, wonders if they talk about you behind your back. It's not out of hatred. I'm telling you. Yeah, they do, by the way. It's not out of hatred. It's or any kind of like, they're not trying to be negative. It's just they don't quite get you anymore. And so when they do have conversations about you, um, they're, they are talking about how they don't quite get you anymore. Now, for others of you, it may not be that it's old childhood friends, but it could be actually your family of origin. And all those same dynamics that I just talked about, and I should have said this earlier, please forgive me. I hope you're still around. I hope you didn't click off going, oh, well, I don't have any friends like that. It's it's your family of origin. It's the family that you grew up in that you have now outgrown, okay? Same basic idea. Um, so because of these learnings, these knowledges that you've gotten that they did not get you, or do not have, your concept of like everything is different. But it is particularly noticeable in your concept of love, your concept of giving and receiving, your concept of personal relationships, whether it's romantic love or friendships, sibling. Um, I'm sorry, my cat is, what is it, Kester? What do you need? Yeah, he's, he just got really, really vocal all of a sudden. I don't know. Sorry, guys. Um, but your concept of... Um, what it means to be in a personal relationship with somebody is 
so beyond what theirs is and what you've had with them is no longer fulfilling needs for you. Okay. Um, as I was talking a few minutes ago, um, these three cards decided to make themselves known. But before I get to these, I do want to come back over here for a second. So in addition to these new ideas, wisdoms, uh, knowledges about life that you have acquired that your, um, your group of friends or family of origin have not gotten, you also have um, new knowledge around love itself, what it means to love and be loved, love and be loved. So the idea that, say, for instance, this is just an example that, you know, if a guy really loves you, he'll be jealous when another guy talks to you. That kind of a thing. While that was a marker of love for you in the past, it's not anymore. OK, so you have a new concept of love now. Again, not just romantic love, but um, all love relationships, familial as well strong bonded friendships as well. What you expect to receive in these relationships has evolved. It has grown. Your expectation is much higher. So the three cards that came out while I, I mean, they just like jumped right out of my hand. I wasn't even shuffling at the time, you guys. I was just standing here talking to you. And these three cards just blew out at the same time. Now, I don't always think that means something but here's what I couldn't get past which is why I've brought it to your attention we have the queen of cups and the king of cups they came together so that's very much that love energy which we already see represented so much in your reading as it is the love energy we see it in the form of cups with the page of cups and the six of cups but then also you know speaking of the six of pentacles that tends to be about giving and receiving and a lot of times it gets brought into uh, the topic it, it's it's used to interpret the giving and receiving in relationships right uh three of cups is definitely relationships oh yeah that's also cups energy <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry so when the Queen of Cups, King of Cups, and the Devil all showed up together, I knew I needed to share that with you. If seeing those three together immediately makes you think of something, let me know in the comments what that is. But I'm going to tell you what comes to me. What comes to me is that... Um, you've been... And, and we've already talked about this a little bit. You've been led to a more mature way of loving. It's almost like this is a confirmation of everything that I had already said. Not even almost like that's exactly what it is. Okay. Queen of Cups is love in its maturest, most mature form. King of Cups is the same, but with action. Right. So you are at a place in your life now where you are looking for others open to others who are able to love in a way that works and you no longer have room in your life for those uh, uh, relationships where the love doesn't work. And I'm using, again, love. It doesn't necessarily have to be romantic, you know, because you can have like a mother that claims she loves you, but every choice she makes is uh, not in your best interest. And, and, and she's been doing that since you were a child. That's not mature love, you know. Um, so, and see how they, they're, they're like barring the devil card, right? In case you're not familiar with this deck, yes, that is indeed the devil card. So this, you're ready is what I'm getting. If you doubted at all in any way, at any point that you were capable of having the kind of, uh, relationships that are mutually fulfilling, the message to you from Inca Sazana is not only are you able to have it, but you are ready for it. You have done the work. You have done the work. It's time. So look forward to that. Look forward to new relationships coming your way during this uh, new moon in Pisces on February 20th. Pisces is also water energy, like cups, right? So really just expect there to be um, 
new relationships coming your way. I, I dare say maybe even more than one. Um, some of these might be romantic. Some of these might be um, just new friendships. This idea of, you know, soul family. I don't know if you guys have heard that term. I don't really like the term soul mate personally, but for some reason I really do like the term soul family. And so that's that idea of like the people who you just vibe with, right? Y'all are, y'all are in it together. Y'all are, you're just in the same place or in, um, uh, what's the word? not cord uh corresponding places no hold on uh compatible Com you're just really compatible with each other <clears throat> where you are in your lives right now so these are some of the people that are going to be coming your way during this new moon okay some of them will be uh some of you guys will be experiencing a new love relationship um or the potential for new romantic relationships. So you might find yourself on a, I, if I've said this already, please forgive me. I feel like I've said this at least in one of the readings. It might have been yours. Dating site um, or um, in a new social group or taking a new class that introduces you to new people who have similar interests to you. There are ways in which you're going to start being introduced to new people who have similar um, a similar level of emotional maturity to you. That's what I'm getting at. And there's no more of this shit right here. Okay. No more of the kinds of associations that do become addictive, that do keep you trapped, that do keep you stuck. They become addictive because you overthink how to fix it. If you are empathic by nature at all, this has been your tendency for so much of your life, trying to be the one to make it better, feeling the... Um, the responsibility to make things work as opposed to being able to go, this shit don't work. You got to go, <laughs> right? Or this shit don't work. I got to go. Whoever's got to go. Somebody got to go when it don't work. But there's, I feel that for you guys, for this, this year, there's going to be just like, I, I can't, come on. This is clearly... I feel like this is clearly saying there's there's going to be a beautiful, mutually beneficial and loving romantic relationship in your life. That's what I'm getting from this. And if some of you are married and you're like, well, Sean, I'm already in it. Do you have that with this person? Because if not, maybe this isn't maybe the person you're with isn't like maybe you shouldn't stay with them. And if you don't or 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 or, or don't get mad at me, don't click it off. Uh or is there the potential to have that with this person? Is this person that you're already in the relationship with, are they the kind of person that has a growth mindset that is open to growing and changing so that you guys can love better and in a healthier way than you have before and have this kind of a peaceful, uh, spiritually bonded relationship without the drama? Inkozans. Inca Sozana's uh, affirmation in the guidebook that her card comes from, the, the uh, deck is the African goddess rising deck. I love it. And she's actually literally my favorite card. And I didn't deliberately pick her for your readings today. I shuffled all of my goddess decks together and then picked three. Um, and she's the one that she's one of the three that came out in the message, her, her, her uh, affirmation. In the guidebook is, um, I am always being guided in the right direction. No, that's not right. I am always being, hold on, it's close to that. I am always being divinely guided, I think. Hold on, let me look at it. Something like that. I am always being guided in the right direction. I had it right the first time. I am always being guided in the right direction. And so let that be your truth. Let that be your message, your main message today from Inko Susanna. While it may feel scary to start shedding these relationships that haven't worked, while it may feel, look, you might get, sh you might get shamed, you might get betrayed, you might be, you know, you, like straight shit might be talked about you for moving on from the people of your past. But, you know, it's called growth for a reason, you know? And when we grow, we sometimes outgrow things. And you don't have to be ugly about it. You don't have to, some, in some cases, you don't even have to say anything. You just stop, 
you know, being a part of certain things. And it's a, a very natural evolution that you're no longer, you know, in relationship with certain people. I'm not saying ghost. I'm like, I'm just saying the things that are optional, you know, maybe you don't do them. Maybe you don't go. And if, if you're not comfortable having the conversation, because I mean, and I get it, like how comfortable could it be to say to old childhood friends or your family of origin, hey, listen, I've outgrown you. <laughs> so I'm not going to be seeing you anymore. <laughs> Y'all, I've said some shit like that to people. Like, anyway. Um <laughs> Anyway, so you are always being guided in the right direction and the steps that you have already taken that have led to where you are right now, this is okay. This was your right. You are on the right path for yourself. And there's so much new love and new kinds of love coming your way with this new moon in Pisces on February 20th. Before I say goodbye... I am going to pull an affirmation card for you from one of my favorite decks. It's called the Starlight. I think it's just called Starlight by Jessica Lee L.E. Oh, goodness gracious. Hold on, y'all. I just dropped all the dang on cards. Um, you know, it's very interesting to me that I felt the need to say dang on instead of damn, but I've said shit like 17 times during this entire video. I'm a cursor. I, I, I swear when I talk, you know, and so if that's not something you're comfortable with, you, you know, thank you for being here. You don't have to stay because um, I can't I can't Pollyanna myself. <laughs> I, I feel like I need to give you all the real Sean. So I just dropped all the damn cards, but I picked them up and reshuffled them. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick a couple. Uh, sorry, a a card with an affirmation on it. Uh to just give you a little bit more uh, encouragement. So we got outer space, take the time to heal, grow and expand. What? Is that not what we were just talking about? Ugh. I don't know why I felt the need to make that sound. What a weird sound. It's kind of like a in your face. I didn't, I didn't mean to be so obnoxious. Um, in my house, I'm known as Bradicus the Brat Lord. And I'm a Bratosaurus Rex. Remind me to sing that song for you one day. It's a song I made up after my boyfriend called me Bradicus. Anyway, back to you. <laughs> um, take the time to heal, grow, and expand. Yes, so what I'm getting from this is, well, first of all, a slight reprimand that I have only focused on the people who have already done this work in this reading. Hopefully those of you who haven't done the work yet but have been feeling a call to do such work that you, you hopefully you stuck around and you got the messages just the same because that is possible for you as well. Everything that I said to the people who have already come to these realizations, it is true for you as well. This is your reading as well as evidenced by this, that you can take the time to heal, grow and expand. Let yourself. And for those of you who have already done it, this is your confirmation that you have done the right thing. You were being guided in the right direction. Oh, yeah. I'm getting real obnoxious right now. Okay, so <laughs> on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Apparently, I'm hungry. I think I get, I think I get like really like chatty and weird when I'm hungry. Um, and I want to say... Thank you for being here. I always appreciate it. You guys, if you have not already, please like this video. It helps YouTube know to push it out to more people who are tarot enthusiasts and want to hear the sound of my voice telling them what to do. Um, also, if you have not yet, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. The, uh, as you already know, subscribing to the channel allows you to know every time I post a new reading. I have a new narcissist reading coming up in a couple of days the last one i did was super popular with you guys that one just you know it, it resonated for a lot of people and that makes me happy so i want to give you guys another uh narcissistic guidance nope that's not right dealing with a narcissist that's what i call it in my etsy shop speaking of etsy shops if you ever want a personal reading i do those as well you can order them via etsy if you don't have an etsy account that's okay you can order them on my website and uh pay through square the uh, links, yes, the links to everything that I have talked about 
are in the description box of this video. I keep hitting this damn camera. It's like an earthquake. You know I live in LA, right? So next time I just won't say anything. I'll just let y'all think it's an earthquake. Anyway, yeah, I need some food. Thank you for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time. Enjoy your new moon. You guys, I offer relationship readings on my Etsy shop. So if you have an interest in getting a love and relationship reading or a narcissistic relationship reading for any of you who have that situation going on in your life, please check out the links below. It'll show you exactly how to do that. And uh, for the narcissistic relationship reading, if you use discount code NARC1, you will get 15% off your first order.